What's going on YouTube? I am John of Team Greedlock here to bring you a deck profile. Um, first, I want to give a thanks to the Alphonsus of Team Greedlock. He provided me with a tripod so that I'm able to record at home and make quality vid videos for you guys at a much easier pace. So, shout outs to him. But you're here for um, the video, so I'm going to give you guys a deck profile on Battle Sisters. Uh, I've been playing OTT for the longest of time. It's actually the deck. Uh, um, I found the most success within this game and seeing that they got a revision um, and became a lot better I wanted to make the deck and uh, I'm enjoying it. I really feel like the deck is uh, very good um, So we're just gonna get into it first. We start off with the starter. It's battle sister um, Keep free uh, something like that uh, <laughs> Words are really hard uh, It's it's effect is that it's a forerunner pops out a soul and it has GB skill that it shoves itself into the soul to give all your battle sister regards 3k um, for for the turn continuously. Um, and then it ends in, at the end of the turn. Uh, this card's good because it makes uh, very good power plays in the deck combined with the stride break. It's a with the the grade three stride break. This is a total of plus six to everybody, which makes power columns insanely huge. And uh, I don't know, it's just very good. It's also free. Like, I was considering running other starters, like early game starters that allowed me to fill up board. Um, the, I for, I'm forgetting the name, but like the counter bus one, shove the soul, check top three, call one against two. But I, I stuck with her because she's no counter bus and she gives the deck massive power considering the, the way that my deck is built right now. Uh, not a lot of the twos do a lot of work um, to push on their own. So I used the starter also to buff them up. And I don't know, the cards is very good. Um, and then we move on to triggers. You got the four old school, the four gingers. Uh, all promos because they look nice. And not to mention that they're battle sisters so that they go with the deck. And you need battle sister um, counter blasts in order to do your stuff. So ginger. Uh, it's very good. Uh, my favorite crit though is definitely Battle Sister Muffin. I love this card. Um, not, not only is it a paradigm for the deck, considering it goes back into the deck um, and then shuffles, it also has another ability if you have Battle Sister Vanguard. The ability is you give a unit 3k, as well as the ability of Oracle, Vanguard, or Rearguard. On attack, you counter charge 2. So, you usually give this to a Rearguard because after your Vanguard attacks, you have the Oracle active, and also um, the 3k makes your columns uh, even bigger, um, so still water could be uh, much more of a threat. Um, and the counter charge is very good, considering that it's a heavy like counter charge too, you're able to get a lot of resources back in order to use for other cards, and it just uh, refunds you a lot. It's also just a returning crit, and having a returning crit in a deck that um, draws a lot is very helpful. Um, eh, not much more to say about it, to be honest. Uh, then the card I despise, I really wish we had a third Battle Sister crit, but I run four Psychic Bird. Um, I, before anything, uh, I run OG art because I like the OG art more than the, uh, the reprint art. Uh, I think it looks a lot nicer. Uh, besides that, its effect is Act, you can put into the Soul and draw a card. Um, what I really like about this card is that it's, uh, it gives me Soul in order to be able to use for, um, uh, units in the deck that need, uh, well, basically still water in order to use it to soul blast if I need to, considering a lot of the card, well, some of the cards in the deck may fight for soul, so this can help uh, compensate for that by giving the uh, the still water soul to use, and also it's just another crit so that you can hit and you can deal more damage because 12 crit uh, pushes at your opponent and makes it so that your turn with either stolen or still water is a lot scarier, and also you can... Uh, you can rush with this by putting it by putting your starter to the side, if need be. If you're playing a very uh, uh, tempo -y deck in the beginning of the game, you could ride. Um, what you have your starter on the side, you call your psychic bird in front of it. If they attack it, it's whatever. It's like you guarded with it, and if they didn't attack it, then you just shove it in their soul and draw later. Um, it's a good card, and also. Uh, Again, the reason that I hate it is because it's not Battle Sister. The reason that it's not Battle Sister is sometimes you either can't use Coquette or Mar or Florentine for counterblasting it, or you check it with Coquette and it has to go to the bottom of your deck. But you, you still need to play it. It's a crit that has a skill, so we play it. Um, then we run four Battle Sister heals, uh, two uh, Chai and two Churros. Um, 
the only real reason I do this is because uh, when I when we actually went in on the case, I only I was dumb enough to only pick up two churros, and I had two chais in my house. So I was just like, whatever. It's been working out, so I'm like, whatever. Yeah, but you need them. Uh, I'd rather run them instead of the effect heals because effect heals don't do anything. Uh, the fire selection ones and their battle sisters, so that they they work. If I can check them off a cold cut, that's 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 good. Um, and then we move on to grade ones. We run four Marmalade, the Battle Sister Perfect Guard. Um, immediate upgrade of uh, the original Perfect Guard that's a Battle Sister because this again could guard anything. And then it also has another skill that if you have a copy in the drop zone after you guard with it um, and you have three, three cards in your hand, you can draw a card. So if you have five cards in your hand when you Perfect Guard with this, you get to replenish yourself. So it helps if you're rushing at your opponent and you have multiple copies of the Perfect Guard in your drop zone. You are able to uh, recom uh, compensate yourself by drawing into uh, uh, replenishing your hand, essentially perfect guarding for free, and uh, it's just a uh, it's a good card. Um, it's battle sister is also the other reason why we run it. Otherwise, I probably would be running the unflipping perfect guard. Uh, you just need a battle sister for a lot of things, and to have this with a skill that can guard anything is very good. Then you run uh, probably the best or one of the yeah, it's probably the best grade one in the deck. Bakmushin. Uh, this is a stride assist for OTT. So it, that's already good in itself. It's a battle sister, so it synergizes with the whole deck. And it's one of the best stride assists um, for subclans because it also just has a standard uh, stride assist skill where if you place it, you reveal a battle sister grade 3 and search another battle sister and then discard a third. So this is very good because of the fact that uh, if you're obviously missing your main grade 3 stride break, you can go and swap it out and search for it. Or in this case, you can search out your other grade 3 in order to make power plays if you need to, because I play another grade 3 for power plays. Um, and also, just having it be a standard stride assist that's a battle sister is very good. And it's not one of the ones that have to like stay on board and retire itself. It's really just a standard stride assist. It's, it's a really good card that they gave for, um, for battle sisters specifically, and I'm happy that we got it. <laughs> the uh, the regular stride assist would have been a little bit too uh, inconsistent, so I'm happy. Um, then you run two Taffies. There are two 10k attackers. Uh, I like the card. Uh, early game is pretty good with it. You can swing at 10k bases if people are still playing them. And if not, it's still just a good unit to swing at with because 10ks are the best number in this deck because three... Excuse me, three... 1 plus 3 makes them 13, and then a plus 3 from either the Crit, uh, the Crit Waffle, or, um, I'm sorry, the Crit Muffin, and the, uh, and the Starter makes it 16. So it just makes for very, uh, powerful plays on the, uh, on the turn. So it's a, it's a good card. I don't run 3, uh, 3 of it, or 4 of it, though, because I value Rusk a lot more. Uh, Rusk is essentially... Uh, when it attacks anything, you can Soul Blast the Battle Sister and have a gain 3k, but she's mainly running here because she has resist. This is very good because of the fact that some of your worst matchups just get rid of your board or retire it. The main two bad matchups right now that are in the meta are, um, whatchamacallit, are the, uh, well, I'm blanking, are Gears because that they're uh, new grade 2 that that they bind a card from the top of their deck to spin a card of grade or equal or less. If they hit a grade 1, they can't spin this, so I get to keep my boosters on the board. Uh, Narakami, they can't uh, they can't really uh, kill this, so I maintain sufficient boosters throughout the game. And also Domination, because they can't dominate this. That's the most important thing. Like, Dominate is very bad because you build a board and you try to hurt your opponent and they just dominate everything and they kill you. So you just want to make sure you have less um, units that are being are going to be able to be dominated. Um, and obviously Link Joker, because, you know, the resist is very nice against them. I mean, it's just a really good card. They have the same effect as Taffy, but with a Soul Blast, it's kind of um, hurtful because, you know, the deck needs Soul. But you can, uh, you can compensate for it. And to be honest, sometimes the resist is much more important than its first skill. So, yeah. Then, Money Card. Even though, in my opinion, it's not worth its price tag. Uh, Coquette. Um, Coquette's effect is Vanguard or Rearguard, uh, on hit, you can counter boss the Battle Sister, check the top card of your deck, on hit to Vanguard, counter boss one, check the top card of your deck, if it's a Battle Sister, add it to your hand, if it's a Psychic Bird, because that's the only non-Battle Sister, it goes to the bottom of the deck. Um, it's a good card, uh, I honestly feel that 
it's um this is necessary in the deck sort of like you need a lot of you need some units that can be pressuring as a vanguard on their own and coquette's just very good for that there's another version of her that's a gb1 11k attacker crepe but it only works once you get to grade three and you need to be able to pressure your opponent as well as just like um build resources at the grade two and even if this is your only solo grade two it builds you resources and gets you to um cards you may be missing like other grade twos or grade threes that you need to ride so the cart's good it's not worth 15 dollars in my mind though but whatever uh tart uh your battle sister 10k i still feel like this is important because that again like i said before two threes makes a 16 so it just makes for very good columns on their own and early game 10k bases when you're running all 10k shields is actually very helpful so that you can be able to save on damage and uh rush at your opponent and they uh they will have to either focus on your rear guards or they won't be able to deal you as much damage as they hope they would have and then you could compensate by going into a first stride that kind of gives you enough elbow room in order to take the fir their first stride and then retaliate or just um you know do what you normally do it's like it, the, the the card is very good i'm not gonna fault it for that um and some people may uh, run other cards for like uh extra options but i tested a lot of cards and um tested a lot of other battle sisters and i honestly do feel like tarts uh as a 10k base is the better choice and then uh probably should have gone over this uh before then but obviously everybody runs for sable um sable is absolutely fantastic it's on place on rear guard you if you have three or more other battle sister units so this can include your vanguard you can soul blast a battle sister and draw a card non gb this card is absolutely amazing because if you're playing against any rush deck or any sort of like uh tempo deck or control deck you could rush with these and you could replenish resources along with pushing at your opponent's face like this this card is um so good it replaces itself, it rushes, and it's just early game draw power that gives you a defense. It's it's very good. Um, and like I said, I don't run, uh, those are the 12 twos that I run because I don't think that any other grade twos are really worth it. Um, like Macaroon is okay because uh, she's a 12k attacker for the deck and, you know, it could hit the Vanguard on its own, but you don't really get much value out of her besides the early game and in the early game these are a lot better the reason you don't get much value in her in the late game is because a plus three on her is only like 15 and then the booster is 10 so it's like 25 so it's very awkward i don't like her pancota pancota i tested her but she was just a really vanilla card until i got to grade three because that's the only time when i wanted to use her effect so she kind of was just dead weight until then so i kind of just wanted more early game from the tart and uh, obviously crepes just uh, crepes in my opinion is the worst coquette um, uh, because it's slower and you don't get to use it as early. So yeah, um, obviously we're running for Florentine uh, the stride break. The stride break is absolutely amazing, a hundred percent. Like it's so good. Um, on place on the Vanguard, you get to check the top card uh and then put it to top or bottom this, that that skill is um good because if you ride into three first you could be able to see what's coming up and or if you don't like what's uh what's on top of your deck you could exchange it that's that's already good on its own the broken effects is a stride break the stride break is counter blast battle sister check the top two uh put one in your hand and then you can put the other one on the top or the bottom and then you give your vanguard the red text ability of your starter basically every battle sister you're gonna get 3k so not only does it turn every single stride into a regali, sanctuary guard regali, it also just stacks your deck with um, triggers if you need them, and also just helps you dig hard for triggers if you need to get to them. Um, and you know what's coming next, so you can plan accordingly. Uh, the card is just again with the with the addition of Stillwater and the the guard restrict a guard restrict on rear guards that are absolutely huge is insane, and the fact that you can be able to stack triggers on top of that is really good. Like, the card's just, uh, is stupid. Um, and I'm really glad that we got it. It's basically an upgraded Susano that with a Regali stride rate to everything. Uh, and then, this is where people differ. Uh, some people may just run 4-3s. Some people may run, uh, other grade 3s. Uh, 
like uh, to help them as an alternative ride. I honestly just went with Souffle. Some people may not even know what this is. Um, it's on boost of an Oracle Think Tank. You get to give this unit 2k. Um, this is essentially, in my eyes, a macaroon that's a stride water. And the reason that I'm running it is because people may think in their eyes if you ride this you lose but to be honest if you ride anything but florentine you lose anyway like i tested other cards before i even have them with me i tested parquet and i tested madeline um that they were okay for what they were supposed to do um like parfait it, it helped in a grade one rush matchup and it helps in early game if your opponent's not riding if you face matchups like those but that that naturally just gains advantage uh, the way it's built anyway if your opponent's staying stuck so you really didn't need her and madeline's just a really worse stride break her conditions for both of her effects are very bad and you don't want to waste her soul blast cost to unflip because soul is very important and you may not just even have it sometimes so i didn't run it and again uh in my eyes just having a 12k attacker grade 3 that's able to act as a stride fodder that you can have immediate access with your stride break is very good because um if you use Florentine's plus 3, as well as uh, the starter's plus 3, you give everything 6. So 12 behind, uh, that's 6 plus 6 is plus 12 to the column. And 12k uh, attacker plus a 7k booster is 19. So 19 plus 12 is 31 on a, on a Stillwater turn, that's insane. Uh, so I, I run it mainly for that reason, and also, like, just have a rear guard. Like, it's, having your other grade 3 be a rear guard is kind of important. And if you're not going to ride like uh, anything but Florentine you might as well have a rearguard that does something for you uh sadly this is the only battle sister with a grade 3 with a rearguard effect but you make do with what you have uh if you really wanted to you could cut one uh souffle for maybe like a madeline or something but i i probably will do that at one point but i really really value that this card is a 12k attacker more than anything and i feel like you already lose as it is if you ride anything other than Florentine now we move on to the stride zone and get the g guards out of the way first uh we are going to play one of the battle sister g guard sadly uh, i don't remember her name uh Vavrios. i don't even know what food that is uh on g guard you can counter blast one you draw the top card of your deck and you check the top card if it's a grade one or greater it gets five and then you could um place it on the top or the bottom that's good because even if it's a trigger you're able to know that there's a trigger on the top of your deck in order to take uh the damage checks later and you're able to you know set up a better place and it also just gives you a free draw on top of that just for g guarding and a counter blast so i think that in and of itself is very um is very good um just getting a free card for counter blast and a potential 20k shield is is very helpful then you run basically the same card. Uh, you run Lossage Magus Apex, the Fires Collection flipping G-Guard. Um, flip a G-Guard in the G-Zone, uh, and then you can check the top two, add one to hand, the other one to the bottom. This just is in here. Uh, uh, you probably would run more uh, more the Battle Sister G-Guard, but you only run this to accelerate your G-Zone because legitimately your first try flips two, uh, this flips two, so that's four, and then your third stride flips three, so you're at seven, so you're at GB by your third stride, which is absolutely insane if you G guard with this. And in some matchups, you may need the uh, the GB eight, like against Royals, so or against any rush deck mainly. So um, you you just want the option available to you. Uh, and the card isn't the, again the card isn't bad. I I honestly feel like. To accelerate your G-Zone just to grab a card is uh, is really, really good. It's essentially this without checking the grade one on top of it. Then you run one of Ichibyoshi. Uh, three or more cards in your hand gains 5k shield. I honestly do think that this is still needed because sometimes you just need the plus 5k shield without either the counter blast or wanting to chance if you're going to get the 5k shield. Um, the card is really... Uh, the card's really good in just providing you the extra shield that you may need, and sometimes, if you don't need it, you just flip it with the Apex, and, uh, um, I don't know, I, I honestly just feel like it's, a uh, it's a much needed card. Um, then you play, uh, Son of Eternity Amaterasu, um, that's your 5G guards. This one, 
on place on the G guard, you soul charge one if you have, you, you soul charge one and then you check the top or the bottom, and then uh, if you have four more cards in your hand, it also gains 10k shield. It's one of the most free 10k shields in the game, so I honestly do appreciate it for that. I don't appreciate it for soul charge and check the top card because I honestly hate random soul charging, but you do with what you get. And also, it just helps to stack triggers again if you can see them. But again, I really value it as a 10k shield more than anything. So I, again, I, I, it's a very good card just to be able to guard with. The numbers are amazing that we have e very good G guards for this. Um, if you wanted to make changes though, I'd probably recommend cutting a uh, Ichibyoshi for a Dismal because you know Bank of Shares are really prevalent. And you don't want to die for no reason. So yeah, that would be my suggestion. If you wanted to play a dismal sea breeze, honestly, like again, this is a rush deck and a pre GB deck. But if you are open with three counterbots and you're able to do a sea breeze with a Florentine, it's just it's disgusting. You need to give your rear guards plus three, um, give every rear guard plus three and stride while your opponent's at only uh, only at a 9k base or a 10k base, whatever, at grade two. It's very disgusting, and not to mention that uh, your your uh, crit that unflips could uh, automatically repays for this, and your stride break replays for the discard. So, it's a uh, it's a pretty good card in this deck. Um, then you play one gelato. Uh, sometimes your opponent's not going to give you counter blasts to use, so you just want to be able to use this card to give you a resource without having to expend a, ca a counter blast. Because essentially, if you uh, go in your first turn, you want to use some cards. Heavy cards either like two counter blasts to use because you have to use your stride break and then the card so you just want to run this just in case uh, it's effective soul blast one you check the top card for each battle sister rear guard and then you add one card from that from that check cards to your hand and then you just go on the bottom of the deck uh... it's pretty good I'm not gonna lie that that effect just to get a free card is uh... is good for the deck then you run one Mior. You run, still run this card because it's uh, insane. I don't use it for its GB3 anymore because honestly, there's just, just better cards to use. I mean, if it goes late into the game, you could use it for its GB3, um, but you're probably never going to. You use it for its first effect, which is well, you flip a card in your any card in your G zone, um, and then all your battle sister uh, rear guards in the front row get the red text that on hit to anything. You counter boss one and draw a card. That in and of itself is already really good because um, at a first stride when your opponent's uh, trying to guard everything early and then they say okay I'm just going to take the first stride hits you go into this you get to counter blast a lot and just draw back into resources while being aggressive it's a very good card and um, again the battle sister crit can refund this and that's the one of the best part about it the other effect is GB3 uh, your battle sister rear guards in the front row gain 1k for every card in your hand again if it goes late into the game you can use that but you're probably never going to and if it goes late into the game you're probably not going to even have the hand to support anything more than a plus 5 to them um, it is really insane with the stride break skill but you probably will never get to use it um, for its GB3 it's a very good first stride though yeah, speaking of good first strides, <laughs> and even sometimes, uh, you know, the second stride, uh, Stolen. Uh, this card's very good because the fact that um, its first effect is not a G-Break 2 or anything like that. It can be used on your first stride. Um, its effect is Counter Blast 1, choose a face down card. No, you choose another Stolen and flip a face, Stolen and flip a face up. You can soul charge. You can soul charge one if you want to. So if you check the non, if you want to ch keep a non-trigger on the top of your deck with Florentine and soul charge it, you may. You don't have to, but sometimes you need the soul, so it's a very nice option to have. Uh, either way, you can then check the top X amount up to the number of battle sister rearguards that you have, and then organize them on the top or bottom of your deck of your choosing. That in and of itself is very good because in the first stride you can organize either heals on the top of your deck, crits on the top of your deck, anything to push at your opponent's face in because checking either two crits or a crit and a heal on the first stride is very impactful so that in and of itself is already good. And then it's GB3 is every single battle sister rigger against 3k. So obviously it has the same effect as the, the stride rig, it has the same effect as the starter. So it just makes your rear guards really huge if you use this as a second stride. Um, and if you combine all three, that's plus 18 to everybody, that's, 
18? No, it's put, I'm sorry, it's plus 18 to the column, it's plus 9 to everybody, but plus 18 to, every, to the column is absolutely huge. <laughs> that, that, that's a, pretty good. Um, then on to uh, the main stride, honestly, uh, the one that you're going to be using to kill your opponent and probably the best stride that OTT has, thumbs up for SP, is um, still water. Uh, this card is absolutely insane. Its effect, uh, its first effect is non-G Brick 2 Ether, so you can use this as a first stride as well. You counter bust one, soul blast one, flip a copy of itself, you draw two cards. So if you're missing resources, you can just uh, draw two cards to give you um, more cards to fight back at your opponent. Um, just to replenish your own resources, or to feed into Oracle, because this GB3 is Oracle, you flip anything, and then your opponent can guard with grade zeros or G guards for the rest of the turn. That I don't know, that is a really good skill because it doesn't it, it's not saying only her battle, it's everything. So you make uh you you literally take away two thirds of your opponent's guard mechanic by taking away their G guards, their zeros, which is all the major value that your opponent gets out of their shields. Um so you force your opponent to only be guarding with five cave. And if you're like at thirty one if you're at like a 31k column or even smaller, if you're at a 26k column, your opponent has to use four cards. If they don't have a perfect card, they have to use four 5k shields to make them 31 in order to guard your 36k column, 26k column. Yes, which is absolutely insane. This card just makes your opponent waste so much resources. It says you must have a perfect guard. It says you must be saving perfect guards for that turn. It's just, uh, it's it it is broken, but. Uh, and I'm not def and I'm not gonna say I really defend this card's existence, but to be real, OTT, uh, it didn't need something like this, but it was shit before, and now that it has something like this, we're able to actually compete, and I'm happy of it. Um, so, yeah, Stillwater, really good. Um, card is insane. Uh, and then you run in, uh, well. Yeah, you run the GB8, as I said before, because you use the, the flipping G guard in order to get to it by third stride. Uh, the card's really stupid. Um, uh, I, I really love this card uh, even before because I had a Battle Sister deck before the support even got leaked. This card was absolutely insane in it. Its effect is counter bus. When you check the top five cards of your deck, you can add three of them to your hand. Any of them that you decide to keep in the in those that you checked, you get to organize on the top or the bottom, and then it also has it also gains an oracle skill that when you drive check a trigger, you give your front row five k, so it turns every trigger into a double, and uh, uh, that in of itself is really good. Um, the at the check top five add three possibility possibility. I usually only add two if I see like three triggers on obviously. And even if there's um, three non-triggers, I'll either add them to my hand or put them on the bottom of the deck, depending on how thick my deck is. Um, either way, this this just really helps because it gives the uh, a super big power play um, after your opponent has used up their perfect guards. Because, like, to put it in perspective, if every uh, trigger turns into a 10k and you have a 10k booster thanks to your stride rake ability, this is 36 three uh, 10k triggers is 66 so they ha your opponent has to put up 71k guard on her in order to guard it and if you like that like when they lose their perfect guards from the stillwater turn that's just absolutely insane with her and uh, I need to make that clear about the oracle skill if you only have four cards in your hand the trigger that you check doesn't count for this because it's not an oracle at that point it goes trigger zone and then hand so if you have four cards in your hand you go first check that first check is not in your hand when it reaches the trigger zone, so her 5k will not activate. You need to be make sure you're at 5 cards in hand before you even swing with her. Unless you're just okay with missing the first trigger. Um, again, it's just uh, it's a very good card. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I really do love it. And having an option of it as a third stride, <laughs> like as a GB third stride, that's just, uh, that's just insane. Then you have the two. Then, yeah, those are the two game enders of the deck. Like that. This is very good. And then we still run the SGR Kanu Susano. Um, I haven't ever gone into it since I've been playing this deck, but it's mainly for the off chance in which you rush your opponent so hard and you lose so much resources that they uh, it's either playing against a retired deck or something or another deck like that that you um, 
you just want to be able to replenish your hand and draw draw back into your resources and fight back because now your opponent wasted so much resources getting rid of yours that you're able to replenish so fast and they just can't deal with it. And then it also has the GB3 skill uh, that it gains 5k in a crit uh, at Oracle, which checks during the whole battle. So even if you're like 2 in your hand, once you go through your 3 drive checks, you'll have uh, Oracle, so it's active. Um, I, I, I actually wasn't serious. I actually did go into this once just to have a free crit Vanguard. Um, and that in and of itself is good if your opponent's guarding early or you're playing against a deck like Link Choker that only gives you access to your Vanguard. Uh, so it's good for that purpose. Uh, again, the card is is subpar and you may not ever use it, but it, it it's something worth giving a try and you may end up needing it at some point, so that's why I still keep it in. But yeah, that's the deck, guys. Um, obviously, this is... Uh, in some people's eyes, one of the best decks of the format right now, and I'm not going to argue in that, as saying that this deck isn't very good. Um, I'm just happy in myself to play OTT again, and I'm happy that it's seeing some sort of success. So, I thank you guys for watching. If you could take the time out of your day to uh, like and subscribe, that would be very much appreciated. Comment as well. I'd love to talk to you guys, uh, discuss more on things. I will try to be more active on the channel and uh, come and uh, show my face more, be able to put out more content on my own, uh, I have my own tripod. Either way, thank you guys for watching, hope you have a good day, peace.